Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here to talk about rates of change and tangent lines part one. Objective for this video, use the definition of the derivative to find the slope of a curve. Let's get started by considering this graph here. It's the growth of a fruit fly population in a controlled experiment. Um, consider the point P, which is a 23,150, and Q, which is 45,340. And draw a secant uh, from point P to Q. Definition of a secant is it passes through a curve uh, exactly two times. The rate of change of these two points, so P and Q, if I were to actually calculate y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, uh, it turns out that the average rate of change of the curve from 23 to 45 is exactly equal to the slope of this secant line, this linear function, the secant line. So the slope of a secant line gives us the average rate of change of a curve over a specific interval. What if we took this point Q? What if we took this point Q? Oops point Q and we brought it closer and closer and closer to this point P. Okay? Eventually what we'd be doing is we'd take these secant lines, steepen their slope out until they eventually equal the tangent. Definition of a tangent, if you remember, is it intersects a curve exactly one point known as the point of tangency. As we shrink our interval, as the, basically we get closer and closer to that point P, as Q gets closer and closer to the point P, our uh, average rate of change gets closer and closer to our instantaneous rate of change, okay? And specifically at this point P, when we construct our tangent, which is right here, our tangent is right here, this line, uh, it, it just so happens that the slope of the tangent is exactly equal to the instantaneous rate of change at point P. So the slope of a tangent gives us the instantaneous rate of change. This is all summarized for you in a few quick notes. All right, so let's take a look at an example just to kind of get the vocab down and what exactly this is doing for us. Um, we have a, a table right here of a skier, and the, the first question is, is what does the derivative represent? Well, remember the derivative is really just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, a slope of a tangent. And specifically, the slope in this example is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So this, this particular derivative is going to represent the speed of the skier the speed of the skier, the instantaneous rate of change of the skier at any point in this interval. Um, what units would be measured, uh, would use the, what units would be used to measure the derivative? And that would again just be the change in y over the change in x, which is specifically feet per second. So the derivative in this example would be measured in feet per second. So kind of just giving you an idea of what exactly the derivative is going to be used for. Here's the definition of the derivative. The derivative of a function f with respect to a variable x is the function f prime. This is notation for a derivative, a little prime symbol on top of an f. That means the derivative of f. Whose value of x is f prime x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, provided the limit exists. If we wanted to find the slope of a curve specifically at a point. Basically, the only difference between this formula and the previous formula is you're now plugging in a value a into your definition of your derivative, and basically it's going to equal a number rather than a function. All right, let's take a look at an example. This one says find the slope of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 1 at the point x equals negative 1. So I'm going to start off by saying the limit as h goes to 0. Uh, very important. Even though this problem is concerned with x equals negative 1, that does not affect my limit. My limit would still be as h goes to 0, always as h goes to 0. Um, so I'm going to actually plug in my function this time. Here's my function. I'm going to plug f of negative 1 plus h, because I want x going to negative 1, uh, minus f of negative 1, all divided by h. And I'm going to start by plugging this uh, into my function. So lim is h goes to 0. Uh, let's start with this one. So this is negative 1 plus h squared, um, and then plus 2 times negative 1 plus h, and then minus 1. So this piece is this right here. And then I'm going to minus uh, f of negative 1, which actually I'm just going to go quickly find. Uh, if I plug in negative 1 in here, it's negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. Um, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Minus 2 minus 1 is just negative 2. So f of negative 1 is just negative 2. So I'm just going to put that right in here. So that specifically um, was this value right here, f of negative 1. 
and I went and I found it real quick so I didn't have to do it in the in the formula there all divided by h now I gotta do a little simplification so this equals the limit as h goes to 0 let's start with negative 1 plus h squared so that's gonna be positive 1 minus 2h plus h squared and then I'm gonna transition to distributive property minus 2 uh, plus 2h minus 1 and then minus minus just becomes plus 2 all divided h and a ton of stuff is gonna cancel here tons of stuff let's see negative 1 and 1 um, negative 2h and 2h negative 2 and 2 so I'm actually just left with the limit as h goes to 0 of h squared over h which is just equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of h which is just equal to 0 after direct substitution so this is actually the instantaneous rate of change at negative 1 or the slope of the curve uh, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 1 at the point x equals negative 1 Let's try another example. This one says to find the derivative of y equals 1 over x and use it to calculate the slope of y equals 1 over x at x equals 2. So let's first find the derivative. So we're going to do the limit as h approaches 0. Now instead of actually plugging a point in, I'm just going to do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And let's see if we can uh, now plug in uh, the x plus h. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x all divided by h. Again, that's just plugging in the x plus h into the function. And now I gotta simplify. Um, so let's go ahead and take my limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x and let's actually get now a multiplication of 1 over h. And remember that's just me simplifying this divided by h business and calling it multiply by 1 over h and it always helps to uh, cancel stuff in a bit. Let's get a common denominator here actually. You know what? I'm going to space these out a little bit. Space this out a little bit more and then you come over here a bit and that's good enough. Let's get a common denominator of x times x plus h. So let's times this guy by x over x and this guy by x plus h over x plus h. Looking for a common denominator in order to simplify. So equals a limit as h goes to 0 of x over x times x plus h minus x plus h over x times x plus h. And then all these times by 1 over h. Now the sloppy bracket. We will fix it. There we go. Okay, so let's simplify the numerator. The numerator actually is just going to be x minus x, which gives you the 0. So this equals lim as h goes to 0 of negative h over x times x plus h and then we're going to times by 1 over h because what happened is the x and the negative x cancel and the negative has to distribute to the h as well that's why it's negative there um, and one more cancellation while we're here and let's see can I actually add a page add a page sweet um, so we're, we're continuing this problem equals the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over x times x plus h and now I believe I'm able to directly substitute my limit so the the final answer is actually just negative 1 over x squared in this right here this function is the derivative of 1 over x okay and now the, the directions actually ask me to use my derivative to find the slope of the curve I believe at 2 so now what we're going to do is we're going to use my derivative to find the slope at 2. So the slope at x equals 2 is just simply the derivative evaluated at 2, which is negative 1 fourth. So the slope of this curve at x equals 2 is negative 1 over 4. Let's try another example. Uh, this example says find the slope of y equals 2x minus 3 at x equals 8. But this is linear. So why though? Why would we actually do calculus here? The slope at 8 is the slope everywhere. It's 2. This, this function's linear. Its slope is 2 everywhere. No need to do calculus. Let's look at one more example. It says find the slope of f of x at the point. This time we're dealing with an absolute value function at x equals 1. So let's start off with the limit 
as, uh, as h goes to 0, now we're going to be doing this at a point. So it's going to be f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all divide h. So let's go ahead and simplify. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, let's plug 1 plus h in my absolute value. So absolute value 1 plus h minus 2 minus absolute value of 1 minus 2 all divide h. Okay, well the first piece will simplify. So this equals the limit as h goes to 0 of h minus 1 in absolute value minus the absolute value of this is 1 minus 2, so that's just negative 1. Um, negative 1 in absolute value, all divide h. Um, now, we have to be a little careful here with the absolute value of h minus 1. If I go back to look at the original function, uh, absolute value of x minus 2, remember that all absolute value functions are defined in pieces. So specifically, this function is equal to uh, x minus 2, uh, if x is greater than or equal to 2, or the opposite of that, negative x minus 2, um, if x is less than 2, specifically. So because we're at 1, we're less than 2. So we're defined to be the opposite of f of x, negative x minus 2 uh, in this case. So when I go and solve this absolute value of h minus 1, since I need to define this to be, oops, let's get rid of the pain. Um, since I need this to be the opposite of h minus 1, uh, to break the absolute value, I negate h minus 1. This is equal to negative f of x minus uh, absolute value of 1, uh, negative 1 is just 1 all over h. And now I can use the distributive property. This is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of negative h plus 1 minus 1 over h. Uh, and this thing, of course, is equal to, this goes bye-bye, and this is equal to negative h over h, which is just equal to negative 1. So um, the slope at the, of the curve, absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 1, um, is equal to negative 1. By the way, we could have assumed this to be true because um, you're just finding the slope and absolute value curves look like Vs. Uh, specifically, the slope of the, the left piece is usually equal to negative 1 and the slope of the right piece is usually equal to positive 1 since it's just two linear functions, x and negative x, kind of joined together in a, in a piecewise function. Okay.